Good. Please, God. Okay, I just hit you. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Um, so, okay, guys, <coughs> my name is George Rand. I'm an alumni of this chapter. I was a Preakness back in the day. I'm currently a grad student. I'm also the volunteer advisor um, for Chief Nationals with the chapter, so come to chapter every so often, make sure you guys do well. Um, so today I'm going to be discussing how to have a safe social event. So with that, I want to go over the agenda. Um, the introduction we're going to do, then we're going to move over to the learning objectives, then we're going to have a discussion on risk management, followed by BYOB events, that's what we're specifically going to discuss today. With risk management, there's a gauntlet of stuff we could do, like sexual assault, drug and alcohol abuse, hazing, but for today, we're just going to do BYOB events. Then I'm going to break it down into three areas of BYOB events. Registration, door policy, and board policy. Then at the end, you're going to take a post-assessment, you take a pre-assessment before <coughs> this rotation. Is everyone clear? Uh, if you have any questions throughout, um, ask me. So, yeah. <coughs> Tragedy at Rutgers University today. A 19-year-old student dies just hours after leaving a fraternity house. CBS's Hazel Sanchez spoke with her friends tonight in New Brunswick. Caitlin Kovacs was beautiful, bright, and kind, and at just 19 years old, too young to lose her life. Her friends say they miss her already. <laughs> every time I would see her, every time we run into each other, she was always kind of just like full of energy. Um, I mean, she always had a smile on her face. And she was always there for me as a friend. Rutgers freshman Jeremy Rodriguez had been friends with Kovacs since he was in seventh grade. He spoke with her on the phone just hours before she died. I sent some sort of intoxication, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't really occur to me because I'm, well, I so always assumed that people were going to be fine. Kovacs, a Rutgers sophomore, was at the Delta Kappa Epsilon fraternity house on College Avenue early Saturday <coughs> morning when prosecutors say she appeared to be in distress. Kovacs friends rushed her to the hospital where she died. Investigators believe her death is alcohol related. Especially in the movies now, like all you see is this drinking and, and, and they just promote this lifestyle. Rutgers University and Delta Kappa Epsilon sent out condolences to the college community and Kovacs family and friends. <coughs> the fraternity says it is fully cooperating with local and county authorities. Sophomore Aaron Lacerda shared this photo when he and Kovacs were in high school together. Crushed by her death, he's hoping students will learn from this tragedy. She had a whole life ahead of her, and it's kind of just a huge wake-up call for all of us that a friend that might be here today might be gone tomorrow. The medical examiner is still trying to determine Kovacs' exact cause of death. In the meantime, Rutgers University is providing grief counseling for students here on campus. In New Brunswick, New Jersey, Hazel Sanchez, CBS 2 News. And says majoring in animal sciences. So, with that, tragedy can occur when risk is not managed. Uh, Caitlin's <coughs> incident is not an isolated incident. As you can see from here, uh, these are just headlines that took me 30 seconds to Google, and all this came up in the past two years. Um, fraternities tend to partake in high risk event, um, events and activities, and incidents can occur. And if you actually follow the correct policies, you can um, mitigate these issues and not have them all together and save people's lives. So. That. I want to go over the learning objectives. But that of this facilitation, learners will be able to assess the level of risk at a social event. Learners will also be able to list ban activities and beverages at BYOB events. And finally, Learners will be able to identify the guidelines for BYOB registered social events dictated by JMU's Office of Fraternity and Story Life and Talk at Epsilon International Fraternity. You guys understand this, this expected to learn, and hopefully be able to learn it all. Yeah, so we cannot eliminate risk, but we can manage it. <coughs> risk is a part of life, whether taking the bus to school or asking someone out. Less about risk, but we can attempt to manage it and thus mitigating it. 
Um, what do you guys think of when you hear risk management? You guys could be honest. Like keeping control of what's going on. Okay. Any situation that you're in. Okay. It usually sounds like a task. <coughs> yeah. It's a task that's important to make sure you yeah. 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 Minimizing exposure to danger. Yeah, those are all great answers. Um, this management, at times I know undergrads can look at it as being um, mitigating fun, but it's there to protect you and the organization. Um, that's why this management <laughs> policies are in effect. So Teak Nationals uh, created a PDF online about BYOB events, and they break it down into three types of risk <coughs> events. So a low risk event would be a substance free event, third party vendor BYOB event. High risk event would be a pseudo BYOB event without guidelines and regulations. Then a very high risk um, event would be pretty much animal house, kegs, um, liquor, um, drinking games, and all of the above. So, would you guys like to discuss when you've been to a very high risk event? Do you got, how many have been to a very high risk event? We all have. I was an undergrad at one time. Um, what were your experiences? Um, based on my experience, like, it always felt like things could always get out of control very easily. Yeah. Um, like things weren't dangerous, but you always had that sense that at any moment something could go wrong. Yeah. I mean, definitely the thing that comes to mind with me is I always see people stumbling some way out of those events. Yeah. Like, they definitely help getting home. Yeah. And that's just, like, classifies that whole experience for me. Just like, yeah, you're going to need help getting home from this. Yeah. And with that, people could have alcohol poisoning or people could get mud going home or drive drunk. So there's all, and there's normally not sobers there to take care of that. Anyone have... <coughs> Personal experiences that you'd like to discuss a high risk party that may have gone out of hand? Uh, no? Okay. <laughs> yes? Yeah, one time I went to this party and there were tons and tons of jello shots and uh, it just got out of hand really quickly and uh, people uh, were destroying the property and you know, destroying each other and uh, wasn't the best event, wasn't the safest event. Yeah. yeah, so that's a very high risk event. People could get <laughs> injured or worse. So do you guys want to discuss the time you went to a low risk event and how that was different at that experience? <coughs> you guys had a sober mixer correct last week. How did that go? How is that different from those very high risk events? I guess the focus was just kind of uh, more social, I guess. You know, we just yeah. kind of, uh, it was like a sorority mixer and so we just, uh, hung out and talked to people we hadn't met before. There was food provided, it was very relaxing, a clean, safe environment. <coughs> so it, there's definitely a big contrast there. Yeah. Anyone else thoughts about that event? Was it fun? Yeah. yeah. Probably had better conversations with the girls than you would a very high risk event. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. <coughs> so, so questions for consideration. In assessing the level of risk for an event, it is useful to ask yourself these two questions. Was it foreseeable or predictable that under the circumstances someone may be injured? Or did you do all that a reasonable person would deem appropriate to avoid incidents? Uh, most of the time when fraternities and even sororities have social events, the answers to these questions are condemned. <coughs> because they probably did follow the correct regulations. <coughs> so, having registered BYOB event. So, because um, <coughs> you're members of Teak National, you have to obviously follow their alcohol and drug policy, and you also have to follow JMU's fraternity and sorority life's policies because you're a member of the Greek community here. So, with that, there's the alcohol and drugs policy put out by Teak Nationals, and then you have the JMU FSL standards <coughs> policy, both you can find online. I have links to them at the end of this facilitation. Um, concerning uh, JMU FSL, I made a note of AGCs. Do you guys know who they are? Anything about them? <coughs> yes. Yeah, they're the people that come to check on the 
parties that are registered to uh, make sure everything is going uh, according to plan, that yeah. everything's safe. Yeah. There are um, students who are members of Jamie's Greek community who are um, paid by the university to do a variety of things. Some do risk management, some do philanthropy, but they all have to um, normally one on the weekends along with people in the tournaments uh, in IFC and Panhel to go around and check parties. So it's important to know who they are. <coughs> so BYOB events. They're the only social event that you can have um, as a tea chapter. And that's dictated by TK International and JMU's FSL. Besides holding um, a party at a third party venture, but that's a different conversation for another day. And I can give you info about that if you want. So why be why be? Puts no risk in the fraternity for providing alcohol to minors. Yep. <coughs> Great answer. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I mean, that pretty much covers it. But yeah, it shifts alcohol onto the guests. Um, if it's alcohol is paid for by the chapter, um, if something happens, the chapter's at fault where if people bring the beer to the party, they're assuming some of the risk if anything happens. So yeah, it's a great answer. And what does a BYOB event entail? I'm assuming you guys have an idea <coughs> of BYOB but specifically with registered social events, what do you think it entails? Yeah, I know when we do it, people have to come and check it in behind the bar, and then, it, uh, you know, they come and check out their individual bottles and stuff yeah. like that. I do. Anyone else want to take a guess? It's okay. I'm just imagining the guy walking in with two cases, ready to party. That's a no. <laughs> <laughs> so... You'll learn about that in a second. Yeah, great answers. So registration. The registration packet has to be turned in on the Tuesday at noon of the party. Of the weekend it's happening or can happen during a week um, night. And with that, you have to include the alcohol event registration form, the guest list, sketch of the location, and a written plan of how the alcohol policy will be enforced. You also receive wristbands given by FSL, and they're mandated by FSL. You can't use any other wristbands. If you run out of them at the party, you can't let anyone else in. Um, the guest list cannot be more than 250 <coughs> invited guests, and you're allowed to have up to 30 unannounced guests show up if they have to sign in. Sober members, you have to have a minimum of six sober members at all times at the event. Um, they can't drink within 24 hours of the event. They have to stay for the whole designated time. They can't leave at any time during it. One of them has to be an executive member um, of the chapter. So whether it be the Preetness or Hegemon, uh, executive has to be there at all times. And they're the one who is expected to shut down the party if it gets out of hands. Um, them at the HVC, so um, that. And then expectations of the sobers obviously is to constrain, contain, I mean, contain the event <coughs> within the specified room. So with um, the packet, you have to sketch where it's going to happen, so they need to contain it, and they also need to make sure that FSL and TEKS um, alcohol drug policies are followed. So they're pretty much the enforcers of the party. Good. Yeah. So door policy. Two sobers at the front and one at the back. The only people who can come in to the <coughs> back entrance of the party is first responders, so police, firefighters, uh, medics, and also HDCs, but no one else is allowed in the back door, um, and no one's allowed out. Within minutes, um, people who come, they have to be sponsored by a member of the organization, <coughs> so they have to have their name with the guest list that was turned in on that Tuesday. Um, they have to show their chat card to show that they're a student at JMU, 
and also their ID to show if they're 21 and over or under 21. And if they're an out-of-town guest, they have to show their ID, and they can't be under 18, and they can't be a high school student. So even if they're 18, but they're in high school, they're not allowed to enter. Um, who drinks over 21 gets wristband, and if you're under 21, you get mark on the hand, big X, short beard, <coughs> can't come off, so the bartenders know who to serve. And then the sobers have the right to refuse anyone. If they're too intoxicated, they seem kind of sketchy, they have the right to not let people in. <coughs> Activities of beverages banned for BYOB <coughs> events. So, this is a list of everything that's banned for BYOB events. Um, <coughs> why do you think that drinking games are not allowed? People can be targeted to drink more than they want to. Okay, so peer pressure, Dante? It definitely speeds the rate of consumption. Yeah, definitely. I feel like some people can get away with it just drinking. You know, Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so lack of control. Yeah, all great answers. How about why um, wine would not be allowed? Any ideas? Why no wine? I mean, the only thing I can think of is higher uh, alcohol like, percentage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So wine. Um, has a higher alcohol content, so people will get drunk faster, there's more likelihood of um, getting intoxicated. Also, with wine, it normally comes in a bottle or comes in um, a box of wine, so it's more difficult to contain where with beer it can come in cans or you can hand out one at a time, where with um, wine, pores may be a little bit heavier <coughs> than they should be. Um, any others that you know why, such as why glass containers are not allowed? Safety. Yeah, so someone's drinking, drops it, bottle, girls wearing sandals, cuts open her foot, there's a lawsuit. So yeah, so these are all in place to protect you and the chapter. Any questions? So the bar policy needs to be a designated a uh, closed bar, people can't come in behind it. Um, only the bartenders who have to be um, listed at the beginning of the vet can be serving <coughs> alcohol, they have to be 21 and over, and sobers, they can't be drinking at any time. Um, they need to check the wristband <coughs> to make sure that they're 21 and over. They also need to make sure that it's only one beer per trip, so Someone can't grab seven beers and bring it back to their friends because you can't control who's drinking that. And then, <coughs> obviously, they can't, they're not supposed to serve intoxicated guests. Um, it's like if you were having, if you owned a bar and you let people get intoxicated that they drove home drunk, you'd be responsible for that. So they should serve um, intoxicated guests. And what is served exactly? A max of six 12-ounce beers um, served in a can or a transparent uh, plastic cup. And non-alcoholic uh, beverages have to be there. Why is that? Ideas? Water. Yeah, such as water, soda, juice, milk if you want to get crazy. <laughs> uh, energy drinks aren't allowed because, take a guess, Mixing alcohol with energy drinks. Yeah, it's a bad idea. Exactly. <laughs> so we have an activity. I have one for you. So you guys should break up into three groups. So we have five, four, two. Could one of you move over to that table? Sure. All right, great. So with the activity, your task is to Create a short skit depicting a possible hot, um, risky scenario, uh, do a high risk one. Uh, then once you come up with that, you have, I'll give you five, ten minutes to come up with that. Limit it to two minutes <coughs> at max. Um, the audience will have um, to assess the 
level risk and why it is that, why it's very high, and point that out. Sounds good? And keep it PG-13, please. Uh, don't um, use profanity, please. Yeah, good? Got it. Uh, Wait, so we're supposed to do a lot of good revisions? No, 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 Yeah. Okay. So 
What happened that would have you allowed at a registered event? And what made it a very high risk event? Well, a lot of things. The sober just took shots. Yeah. <laughs> First of all. Yeah. They passed on one to six beers. Yeah, that's true. What else? Definitely heard like beer. are beer to people who weren't there. So, X's on the hands. Oh, yeah. So they got some liquor too. Yeah, yeah. liquor. Definitely heard like take these eight beers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot of things were broken. That's good, but it's great that you guys pointed them out. Does the last group want again? Yeah, sure. Yeah. You guys want to move like more in the middle. Sure, yeah. So I'm in the party. I'm the whole So I'm in the party, he's the doorman, and he's uh, getting them. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, 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 who do you got here, bro? Yo, man, I, I, I don't know how to wait, but yo, I brought my own stuff. I brought, I brought stuff to share, man. Come on, let me in, let me in. Hey, what's up, buddy? Oh! <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's what... <laughs> okay, I didn't bring him. Oh, yeah, and, and, and see. Well, that was good because it showed what happens when you don't follow the rules and what possibly could happen. Um, most likely won't happen, but it's possible it could. So, what did he not do? What did the tour man not do? Check for ID. Yep. What else? Guest list. Yeah. He would really seem to be on the guest list. He seemed to be a random guy showing up. There's only one doorman. Yeah. That too. Um, supposed to be too. He accepted liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of things. So that's good. We have how to follow policies, breaking policies, and the extremes of what can happen if you don't know, follow policies. Yeah. All great skits. Okay. So now we're going to do a post assessment. Um, I'll give you the post assessment now. You fill it out a pre assessment. Um, I'll <coughs> test what you learned through this facilitation. And if you guys want to find out more information, you can go to these sites. This is where I got the content for the facilitation. Um, I'll have sent it to Sheldon to out to you guys if you want to look up anything else other risk management policies. Good. Any questions? Yeah. Great. Right. Thanks, guys. <coughs> Twenty-eight fifty-two. Uh, definitely skip the line. <coughs> oh,